doing something, praying for those, blessing those. See, in, in Jesus' time and, and before Jesus, there was a lot of teaching. And a lot of the teaching was, well, just refrain from or abstain from doing the wrong things. Okay? Does that make sense? So, so, so the teaching was like this. Whatever you hate, what you hate, well, don't do that to other people. Okay? So if you don't like to be hit, then don't do that. So whatever you hate, well, don't do that to people. Okay? But it was, it, it was not, Jesus changes this to a positive command. Do good. Right? Do good. Don't just not bless people. But pray for those, right? Don't just mistreat people, but pray for those who mistreat you. It's like, it's like as, as, as parenting goes, um, as, as parenting goes, um, you know, if, if you desire to, to build a home of faith, you, you don't want to raise up kids simply who know the rules and just don't do the bad things. Right? You, you want to raise kids where it's not just about, well, I didn't steal today, but it's about, I sheared today. It, it, it's not about, well, I didn't cuss today, mommy, but I encouraged somebody today. Do, do, do you see what I'm saying? We, we, we don't want to live in the negative. Or else you have build up homes that are legalistic and all these kind of things. We, we, want, we want to be parents who are do good to those who mistreat you. The positive affirmation rather than just, and it's the same way that we all want to live lives because it's what, Jesus, it's what Jesus is teaching here. Jesus is saying, do good. Radically love people. So let, let me just give you some examples out of my life. These are some examples that if you ask me, Ron, how do you want to be treated? This is the way I would answer. So this is what I'm expecting the whole month of December. I can't wait. This would be great. Michelle, are you listening? Okay. All right. No, I'm totally kidding. So I'm listening to myself say this to you. That makes sense? Okay. I'm in trouble. Shoot. All right. Number one, when I mess up, forgive me. That's the way I want to be treated. Forgive me, you know, forgive me even before I ask. Don't you want to be treated like that? I mean, I mean, don't you just want this grace and this forgiveness to be f- just poured out on you in relationships with people? That's the way I want to be treated. And Jesus says, do good to, right? Do good like you would want to be done to you. Forgive people. When I want to share a fault, when, when I want to sh- confess something, you will have mercy and grace on me. You're not going to judge me. You're not going to yell at me. You're not going to tell me how messed up I am. But you're going to hear it. And you're going to have grace and mercy on me. When I need help, you're there for me. You may not be able to provide for me, right? I mean, we, we, everyone can't provide, right? Everyone doesn't have the resources. Only God, God hands those things out. But I, it, when I need help, I just want people there for me. When something is wrong, ask me what's wrong. When you sense there's like a tension, ask me. Probe. Don't you want to know? Like, isn't there times in your life where you're like, ah, oh, I'm so afraid, but you don't really want to say anything because you feel so selfish if you say something and you're like, ah, oh, there's something wrong. And you're like, you just got a longing for someone to say, hey, what's up? What's wrong? Are you okay? When our friendship has gone bad, we're able to reconcile and leave it behind. When I hurt you, don't talk behind my back. You know? I mean, are you with me on that? Uh, when, there's, when there's disagreement, I want you to give me the benefit of the doubt. Don't you just, doesn't it just frustrate you when there's a disagreement and there's a conflict and you're like, I had no intention of doing that. Even though that's what happened, that was not my intention. Give me the benefit of the doubt. When I forget to pay you back, yeah, 
I would love a kind reminder, reminder, and possibly to even forget what I owe you. <laughs> so, anyway, so I mean, those are just those are just some things. Do to others, Jesus says. Do to others as you would have them do to you. When you are asking yourself, you know, what do I do right now, God? What do I do in this relationship? Well, what would you want them to do to you? How would you want them to respond to you? And you'll find out what your next step is. But that's challenging, I guarantee you. But take the challenge. Take the month of December, not January, live however you want in January. Take the month of December, just 25 days, and live it out for Jesus. Just, just 25 days. Do to others as you would have them do to you. And, and I, I would bet you're going to get to the end of December and you're going to go, wow. Wow, Jesus knows what he's talking about. I, I, I should live the rest of my life doing to others what I would want them to, to do to me. And you know what? This, this doesn't mean that we're a doormat. Right? It doesn't mean that you're a doormat. Um, when I sin, when I wrong you, the most loving thing that you can do for me is to call me out. It's not to ignore it, right? You should be so concerned for my eternal life and my walk with God. That's most important, right? That you can say the tough things to me. Just do it with love. Or do it with grace. Do it with mercy. Do it not judging, but it's coming alongside. So I'm not saying like you don't have the tough conversation or you ignore, you know, ignore the, the, the despised uncle at the Christmas table, okay? I'm not talking about ignoring, but what Jesus talks us to do. Do. Do to others as you would have them do to you. I mean, imagine. Imagine if we as a church, the worship team would come up. Imagine if we as a church took this challenge. Imagine what life would be like just in this congregation, in your small group, in your home. Imagine if, if we began to treat others the way that Jesus has commanded us to treat them, which is doing good, right, to those who mistreat us, and praying for those who mistreat all those things. I... I I think that this environment, that, that people would walk into this place and they would sense not love for people, but a love for God. Let's take the challenge. Let's do it. And here's foundationally why. Jesus hasn't asked us to do anything that he has not done first. See, Jesus loves everyone. And Jesus' love for you is based upon him and not you. And, and, and listen and hear this, people. Because maybe you're like, what's this whole, what's this whole Jesus thing about? And, and what's this paying this sin, paying this debt? What, what is this what is this all, all about? And, and here's the incredible, radical love of God. See, when we do stuff wrong, a debt is paid. So when, when, when I am mean to my wife, and I'm not loving her the way, well, I sin. And so I owe God something. Because God is holy and we're not. Then I take something from somebody. I, I owe him again. And, and then I cheat on a test. I, I, owe him, I owe him more. I only have $3, so that's all I could do. But I mean, day after day, the debt gets higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. God is here. And God sees the debt. And God loves you so much. God doesn't just ignore the debt. 
Because if God ignored the debt, he would not be just. We have to realize that. If, if you want to believe in a God that just ignores sin, that just ignores evil, that just ignores suffering, you, that's not God. God does not just ignore the debt that is owed. He did something about it. He sent his son Jesus. That's what Christmas is all about. He sent his son Jesus as a baby to live a life, to then die on a cross. And on that cross... He paid our sin. He paid it. He paid it in full. Therefore, you no longer have a debt. And Jesus now says, do what I've done for you. Do to others as I have done for you. Love. Love everyone.